Yo, what's going on guys? Space Kong here. So, today I've got a nice little build to show you. It's taken so long to perfect this, but here we go. I call it the Adric Guardian. So, I wanted to make a healer, but something more than just a healer. So, essentially we have the resto staff on the front bar, and then on the back bar we have a sword and shield. I've separated this build's abilities into two different bars just to make it more simple and it works really well. So on the rest of those stuff you have a lot of healing over time abilities and that's your main healing bar. And on your sword and shield bar, this is kind of where you become a little bit tanky. I mean you're not actually a tank, you're not going to be using Ransack or any other taunts like that. But this bar primarily buffs your allies and you take damage from them. Hence why I've got quite a bit more resistance than your average healer and he's kind of a little bit tanky. So basically you heal, buff and protect him, hence the build's name, the Adric Protector. So let me show you my stats fully buffed. So by now you've probably noticed that my maximum magicka isn't anywhere near 40k and that's fine because he's not just a healer, like I said, he also has a bit of a tanky edge to him. The spell damage is okay, I mean it's not the best, but when I explain how the build works, it all makes sense. 3215 magical recovery is really decent and is very key to this build. And the spell resistance and physical resistance are very nice as well because half this build's skills, you're going to need to be on the front lines which means you're going to be absorbing a lot of damage and it really helps. So let's start with my gear setup. We'll start from the bottom to the top and we have three piece willpower which is great for your max magicka and it also gives you spell damage and I do use spell damage glyphs on this jewelry as well. And by now you've probably already noticed that it's not arcane instead I've got healthy jewelry and that's very key to this setup because you're going to be absorbing a lot of damage from your allies. You'll even be able to save them from one shot mechanics. So you will need a lot of health. I have five piece Sedusa, which is mainly for your Magicka recovery. It also gives you max Magicka and again Magicka recovery. But the main thing is reduce the cost of your Magicka abilities by 8%. For the legs we have two piece gossamer and I realised for the feet I didn't actually have an enchantment on it, I'll probably put magicka on it. But basically, again, more magicka recovery and having it reinforced helps. So on the body pieces I have three seducer and then for the sword and the shield they're also seducer so when I switch out to my resto stuff I'll only have four piece seducer. And the reason for that is because the resto staff basically gives you reduced magicka cost for your resto staff abilities anyway. But when you switch to your sword and shield, it's going to cost more. So the reason why I have five pieces to do so is to reduce the cost. For the head and shoulders, I have the mighty Chudans piece. It is light armor, and there's a very good reason for that. And also, you, for one piece, you get physical and spell resistance. And for the second piece, you get even more physical and spell resistance. And you also get maximum health on top of that. I'll explain the reasons for the light armor when it comes to the passive skills. But it is very key that we have 7 piece light armor. For the chest piece, I did put a prismatic defense glyph on, which basically gives you a tri stat. Just to balance you out a bit, and you're probably wondering why do I need stamina? Well, I do have a stamina heal ability, and that will be explained. And the helmet isn't sturdy and the reason for that is by choice uh, because, well, this kind of is a hybrid build so you will need to do a lot of blocking as well as healing. But don't get confused with being a tank because you're not a tank but you will be absorbing damage. We also have a restoration staff of the seducer. We will be using this a lot and it has a weakening enchantment. This is very nice for the boss battles especially. The idea of this build is to protect your allies and if you can weaken the boss's attacks you're doing your job. The trait is powered which increases your healing done by 6%. For my shield I also have a maximum magicka enchantment and it's Nernhoned. The reason for it being Nernhoned 
is because, like I said before, you're going to be taking damage, and the more physical and spell resistance you have, the better. But I know it's very expensive. Alternatively, you could use Infuse to get yourself more Magicka if you don't want to have... I mean, it's not a big boost in physical and spell resistance, so it's your choice. For the sword, you're going to want Defending Trait to give you more physical and spell resistance. And you're going to want Hardening Enchantment. For this, it's going to give you a 4k damage shield for 5 seconds. Now, it doesn't sound a lot, but it's pretty decent still. It's going to help you survive. Basically, when you're using your resto staff, you're going to be away from the mobs. And when you're using your sword and shield, you're going to be right up in there. Now, for the consumables, food and drinks, I use the Azorga's Red Froth Oil. You get it from a Rothgar quest. And I know it says level 1, but because it's a DLC quest, this recipe scales to your level. But the extra 5k health helps with the tankiness, and the magic recovery, it really helps with the resource management. But alternatively, you could have max health and max magicka. So, let's check out the skills. Now, I'm going to call this front bar the Guardian bar, because this is what you're going to use. You're basically going to guard all your allies. You will have one heal, but essentially you're basically buffing your allies and defending them. And for that, you will need a sword and shield. So, onto the Guardian bar. First up, we have Stalwart Guard. It's a stamina ability, but the good thing is you won't really need to use a lot of stamina. And once you've cast this ability, the only way for it to break is basically if you uncast it or move away from your ally. But essentially it creates a life bond between you and your ally and whilst the bond is there, any damage they take, 30% will be redistributed to you. Which is great for the one shot mechanics. So, I mean, some of the one shot mechanics you can't really help, so say if it's an 80k hit or something, but most one shot mechanics are around 20 to 30k and if you can absorb 30% of that, you're both going to be alive. But that's not all, you and your ally also gain minor force, increasing your critical strike damage by 12%, and that includes heals. It works great in a trial if a tank is struggling with the boss, or even if you're in a dungeon and you have a squishy DPS, you can always keep them alive using this. Also with the execute phase, I always apply this to someone because executes are powerful enough as it is. Radiant Aura, now I have this on both bars, it's very cheap, and if you have it equipped to your slot, you basically get a health, magicka and stamina recovery boost by 10% and when you activate it, and it only costs 2000 magicka, bear that in mind, by activating it for 18 seconds you also get major fortitude, major endurance and major intellect which increase your health, magicka and stamina recovery by 20%. And the thing is about major and minor is they both stack which gives you an extra 30% boost. But not only does it work on yourself when you activate it, it also gives your allies the extra 20%. Now the reason I choose this morph over the other one is because I find it more reliable and I'd rather have the extra 20% recovery, but if you wanted you could choose the other morph, but I'd rather rely on this than have to rely on how many corpses are in the battlefield. Because when you use the other morph, just by activating it once on a corpse means you can't activate it on the same corpse again, which kind of limits you. Plus we already have luminous shards which give stamina, and being a healer, health really isn't a problem. Breath of Life, now I bet you didn't see that one coming. I mean, it's a pretty nice heal, every Templar needs it. So this is one of the main reasons I need a lot of magicka recovery, because it's a very taxing skill. I mean, I know it's only 2682 magicka, and that's with all the skill points to reduce the cost. As well as having 5 piece of juice, which reduces the cost by 8%. But this is your only heal whilst you're on your Guardian Bar. So essentially by the time you've used it, your Magicka Recovery has already regenerated it. Radiant Oppression, now this is your Execute. However, I don't use it when the boss is at 50% health, I only use it when it's at 20% health, when it's at its strongest. So before you use this skill, what you need to do is go on your Resto Bar, add all your AoE healing spells, then flip back to this bar, use the Stalwart Guard on one of your allies, and yeah, you'll take 30% of their damage, but also you'll raise both of your critical attack by 12%, which when you're using your execute is a lot of damage. And whilst you're damaging the boss, all your AoE dots will keep your party alive. 
Luminous Shards, now it's a very nice spell to have, not for the damage of course, it gives your team stamina back and also it stuns mobs which is another bonus. Reviving Barrier, now this is an amazing ultimate, I have it on both bars, it only costs 192 ultimate and that's not a lot when you think about it and what it does is it grants your team a 30k damage shield and I don't just mean 4 players, it also works in trials, you can shield your whole team and at the same time it also heals them for 22.6k health over 30 seconds which essentially adds another heal over time compared to what you already have on your resto bar. Now with all these skills on this bar you can kind of start to see where I get the name the Adric Guardian from. Okay resto bar this is where you get your main heals from. Now first up you're thinking Echo in Vigor that's a stamina heal why would you need that? Well I'll tell you it's an extra heal over time I mean that's that's enough reason as it is anyway but there are bosses which take away your magicka. Both of the last bosses on the Shadow of the Hiss dungeons will steal your magicka and for that you'll use this and you'll use your resto staff heavy attacks and the resto staff heavy attacks heal your allies as well and so does Echo and Vigor. I mean it's not a lot but at least it's something. And on top of that like I said before it's an extra heal over time and on this bar it's all about the heal over time spells. So essentially when you lay down all of your healing over time spells that's a lot of healing. In which case give you plenty of time to switch over to your other bar, buff up your allies, you can even do a little bit of DPS if you want. Although if you're not comfortable with having a stamina heal you could always switch to grand healing. Raiding aura again on this bar. Yeah, I like to have it on both bars because it gives you the extra 10% health, stamina and magic recovery, which is very helpful. And essentially, you won't have to keep switching bars when you want to activate it for your allies as well. Breath of Life. Now, I know I already have this on one of my bars, but I like to keep it as simple as possible. So I have it on both bars to try and separate the Guardian and the healing side of this. Essentially, this is your oh shit button. So say if your allies are about to die, Whack on a breath of life. I mean, I know it costs more on the resto bar because you don't have your five piece seducer. You only have four out of five. But, and it's not as strong as well. But with your healing over time spells, you probably won't need it. Hence the old shit button. But it's there if you need it. Extended ritual. Now, this is amazing. It cleanses yourself for up to five harmful effects immediately. And it heals yourself and your allies for nearly 1,000 health every two seconds for 24 seconds. But that's not all, it also purifies your allies if they activate the synergy and heals them for nearly 5k health. And because of the Templar passives, basically when I stand inside the circle my heals are a lot stronger as well. Hence why I don't need a lot of spell power because there's no point healing someone for over 20k when their health is only say 18k, do you know what I mean? Like you can heal decently for about 10 to 12k per breath of life. Rapid Regeneration. Now I chose this one over Mutagen because I mean Mutagen cleanses your allies but I already have a purifying skill on this skill bar. And it heals for approximately 1k per second. Also it only costs 1400 Magicka which is nothing considering we have over 3k Magicka recovery. Reviving Barrier again. It's not as strong as it is on the Guardian bar but it's still pretty decent and I know I have a lot of skills the same but I try to make it as simple as possible for this build. You can switch out for something else if you want but I mean considering we have a lot of healing going on already we don't really need another healing ultimate. So if you do want to switch out I do recommend the aggressive warhorn. Okay now for the passive skills. Piercing Spear, increase the damage bonus for your critical strikes by 10% and your damage against blocking targets by 10%. If you've got the extra skill points you may as well have it. Spear Wall, increase the amount of damage you can block against melee attacks by 15%. Now like I said before you're going to be taking a lot of damage especially if you're on the front line so this is amazing. 
Burning Light. Now this basically buffs your damage using your Aegis Spear abilities. So when you use your Luminous Shards, it does an extra bit of damage. Not a lot, so it doesn't really matter if you have these or not, but like I said before, if you have the extra skill points, you may as well have it. Balanced Warrior. Now, you don't really want the weapon damage, but what you do want is the spell resistance. Prism. Activating a Dawn's Wrath ability grants three additional ultimate. This can occur once every six seconds, and the more ultimate you get, the more reviving barriers you can cast. Which lasts up to 30 seconds, so essentially you're protecting your team for a lot of time. Illuminate. So when you activate a Dawn's Wrath ability, you grant major sorcery to you and your group. So when you're executing a boss, it makes it even stronger. Restoring spirit reduces the magicka, stamina and ultimate cost of abilities by 4%. Mending. Increase the healing effects from your restoring light abilities by up to 10% in proportion to the severity of the target's wounds. Now with this and some of the other passives on the restoration staff, basically you don't really need a lot of spell damage because you're going to be getting some really nice heals. Hence why I've gone for the Magicka regen, which means you can cast it more often if you need to, and you won't ever run out of Magicka. Sacred Ground, now this is what I was talking about earlier, when you stand in your healing circles, basically you're gaining even more healing done, so Major Mending, increasing your healing done by 25%, now this is another passive, again, which gives you a lot of healing, hence why you still don't need a lot of spell power because my breath of life can already heal up to 10k and that's not a crit so with all these passives you can heal at least 15k 16k roughly and let's face it most DPS don't really have that much health they have around 16 to 18k Lightweaver this is another passive skill that you need I mean okay you probably don't need it but it helps essentially in the end Master Ritualist now this one is a must have. Increase resurrection speed by 20% and resurrected allies return with 100% health. That's pretty amazing. I mean, yeah, it's nice that it gives you a 50% chance to fill a soul gem, but essentially you want that speed and for them to come back with full health. One hand and shield. Now you're going to want all the passes for this. Fortress. Reduces stamina costs of your one hand and shield abilities by 10% and reduces the cost of blocking by 36%. Now, you don't have any one hand and shield abilities equipped to your bar at the moment, but, you know, the extra blocking's nice. And same for this one again. I mean, you don't really need the increased weapon damage by 5%, but the amount of damage you can block by 20% is amazing. Deadly Bash. Why wouldn't you want this? I mean, you're not doing it for the damage, you're doing it for the reduced cost. Deflect Bolts, I mean, this one's still pretty nice to have. Increase the amount of damage you can block from projectiles and ranged attacks by 15%. Battlefield Mobility, now you're not really going to be perma-blocking much, but it's nice to be able to move quickly when you do. Now, for the resto staff passives, again, just take everything. Essence Drain, basically after you've completed the heavy attack with your resto staff, for 3 seconds you gain Major Mending, increasing your healing done by 25%. You also heal yourself or a nearby ally for 38% of the damage inflicted. Restoration Expert, increase your healing by 15% on allies under 30% health. Cycle of Life, restore an additional 30% Magicka when you complete a heavy attack. I mean you don't really need it because you've got a shit ton of Magicka regen, but it's nice to have it there anyway. Next one's Absorb. Restore 540 Magicka when you block a spell. I mean, you're not really going to be blocking much spells when you're on your Resto Staff bar anyway, but, you know, it's there. Just take it. Restoration Master. Now, this is the one you want. Increase healing with the Restoration Staff spells by 5%. Now, that's pretty amazing. I mean, I know it doesn't sound a lot, but, you know, it's a matter of life or death. Here we go, for the light armor. This is why you need seven pieces of light armor. So, reduce the magical cost of spells by 3% per piece of light armor equipped. And the fact that we've got seven adds up to 
and mix that with the armor and passives as well from the other skills, you're going to get some cheap heals. Recovery. Increases magical recovery by 4% per piece of light armor equipped. So that's 28% recovery. I mean, that's really good. You're not going to run out of magicka ever. Spell warding. Now this is how you become more tankier. So increase your spell resistance for each... Prodigy, increase your spell critical rating by 2191 when wearing five or more pieces of light armor. Concentration, increase your spell penetration by 4884. Now this really takes a piss. If you go into your support skill and go down to Magicka Aid, increase your Magicka recovery by 10% for each support ability slotted. Now when you're on your sword and shield, you have two abilities, your ultimate and your stalwart guard. So that's another 20%. Now for the racial passives, I am an Argonian, which increases your experience gain with my restoration staff skill line by 15% and increases your swimming speed by 50%, which is totally useless. Moving on. Resourceful. Increase your max magicka by 3%. Whenever you drink a potion, you restore 12% of your max health, magicka and stamina. Now here we go. This is where it starts getting really good. Now Argonians are probably the best healing race now. Argonian resistance. Increase your max health by 9% and poison and disease resistance by 1485. Now the increased max health is really good for the tankiness and the poison and disease resistance again more survivability quick mend increases your healing done and healing received by five percent now this is another passive which adds to your healing overall basically yeah you really don't need much spell power that's why i put it all in the magicka regeneration because when you think about it really, you're not really going to need to heal anything over 20k, except for the tank, which, you know, they're not going to take a 20k hit straight away if they're blocking. Okay, so here's my champion points. I have the Magician, which reduces magical cost of spells, which again is amazing. The cheaper the spells, the more magic you have. I also have Arcanist, which increases your magical recovery by 25%. Now, I know I probably could have got it over 20%, but I don't know, I like to push it to 25. Elfborn increases damage and healing dealt by spell criticals. So, and again, like 21.6%, that's still pretty nice. And of course, I'm going to have to put 100 in Blessed because, you know, you're a healer, so why not? Increase the effectiveness of healing done by 25%. And again, this is another reason why you don't need a lot of spell power. Because all of it adding up together, you're going to get some nice heals and great resource management. Light armor focus increases your physical resistance by 4407 while wearing five or more pieces of light armor. Now I go for the physical resistance in the champion points because Templars do seem to have a lot of spell resistance just in their passives alone. So I like to try and get them both around the 25k mark. Bastion, now you have to put 100 points into this because your ultimate works so nicely with it. Increase the effectiveness of damage absorbing effects by 25%. Now, when you use your ultimate and you pop that 30k shield, that's really nice. And the fact that the ultimate's really cheap as it is. And another point which I forgot to mention earlier when you use the rapid regeneration, or any other healing tick. So basically, as long as you have a healing tick on, you gain three ultimate per second. So if you wanted, you could have the healing tick on and use heavy attacks and you can get your ultimate really fast. So for combat, use Vigor, Extended Ritual, Rapid Regen twice, Radiant Aura, and then Vigor again. Switch Bars and then Luminous Shards. Now, the reason for this, right, the first figure, I mean, it only lasts five seconds, so you cast that first. And whilst that five seconds is ticking, you use Extended Ritual, 
which is a much larger tick anyway. And then use rapid regen twice to hit everyone in your party. And then radiant aura to give everyone the regen. And then vigor again just to refresh it because the five seconds would have worn off by then. And then when you switch to your sword and shield bar, that's when you use your luminous shards just for the tank. And if not for the tank, at least it stuns the mobs for six seconds, just so your DPS can go in and wipe them out. But if it is for the boss, it'll be nice to give the tank some extra stamina and stamina regen. I forgot to add earlier that the Mundus I use is the Atronaut for magical regen. Alternatively, you can go for the healing one. So earlier, if you remember, I said about bosses which steal your magicka, and then you switch to stamina healing. This is what I meant, so here we go, all my magic has been stolen. So here's what I do, I cast Vigor and then use a heavy attack from my Resto Staff. And although it's not a lot of healing, it's still keeping my allies alive. And the idea of this build is essentially maintaining your buffs and helping your allies. So even though I'm stunned, I'm still helping my allies because I've popped a shield before, so they're still being protected. And also I have all my healing, uh, healing over time spells just ticking over and I know it seems like Breath of Life isn't really doing much healing for David the third but bearing in mind they're 10k heals and he's a tank with 70k health see 10k heal a 20k heal there 11k heal 12k heal see you don't really need a lot of spell power the only reason you'd ever really need a lot of spell power is if you're healing someone with a ridiculous amount of health I mean, I'm happy with having a 12k heal or a 20k crit because, let's face it, DPS, they're only going to have around 16 to 20k health anyway. And a tank would have, well, an average tank has about, I don't know, 30k health. I mean, this one has about 70k, so yeah, it's a bit of a joke, but, you know, you don't really need 3, 4k, even 5k spell power. But again, it all goes on your build. There's no such thing as a wrong build as long as it does its job. Now some healers like to go max magicka and really high spell power, where some like to go regen. You know, it's all it all goes by your preference and your playstyle. As long as it works, you're good. Now I know I went a bit mad with Breath of Life in this pit because I was kind of panicking because we, we had the boss down to low health and usually the boss isn't a problem but it's, it's this bit when you go underneath, that's usually when people start dying. So I just kind of went a bit mad spamming Breath of Life. Also using the luminous shards to stun the enemies helped a lot. So we come to the boss now. So what I do is I buff my allies and lay down a shit ton of AOE heals, healing ticks, anything really, everything in my bar. I just, I just literally unleash it all and wait for the right moment. I keep refreshing it a lot because you want it to have the maximum amount of time because when you switch to your uh, one hand and shield, you're going to need as much healing over time as possible. So I found a DPS. I add the shield to him. And by that I mean the stalwart guard, so basically I'm taking damage off him as well, so if he gets hit, I get damaged. I still have breath of life in this bar, and what I do is I throw a luminous shard down for the tank, just to keep him going, and I spam a few heals. And when the boss gets down to very low health, and the team's looking pretty nice for health, see, there goes one of the shields, here goes a second shield, so everyone's all set now. Now use your radiant destruction, just to nuke the boss. So you know you've done your draw properly when there's a load of AOE heals on the floor and you've got a shield popped up so everyone's protected, hence the Adric Guardian and no one's going to take damage after this point and if they do it's going to be very little damage. So then use your Radiant Destruction just to take down the boss. Although I did break the Stalwart Guard off the DPS in the end because the, the boss did start taking my magicka and I need to switch to my stamina heals. 
So protect your allies, buff your allies, heal your allies. That's all you need to do with this build. But I hope you guys found this video useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have yourselves a great day. Peace. It appears that the student has become the